Ugh, I don't like December. Days are so short this month and of course it's cold and it's already too dark outside. Ugh, hate it. Hello and welcome. My name is Eva and of course we continue our adventure with the Be Perfect Cosmetics and Stacy Marie Carnival Collection. This is Carnival number 5 in the Stellar and believe me or not, we still have 21 shades to test. And with the help of my lovely members of this channel, I created three color stories from the remaining shades and these color stories you're going to see in upcoming videos. So today and the next two. Today I'm going to work mostly with blue shades. I mean, this background is not a spoiler at all. And of course I'm going to work with Stacy's brushes. These are not uh, all brushes in the set. I've already took off some and placed them on my desk so I can see them and choose them wisely. For today's makeup, today I plan to do spotlight and probably cut crease spotlight. So if you have hooded eyes, this will be of course cut crease for hooded eyes because I have hooded eyes. So it will be hard to do any other cut crease done for hooded eyes, right? <laughs> Of course, swatches and close-ups of this palette, as well as close-ups of these brushes, are in the first video with this palette. And this video you can find here in annotations or in the description box down below. I will leave a link to this video, as well as whole playlist with all Carnival palettes. For now, I'm testing Carnival palette. You know, I need to test every single shade, so hmm. I need those three more videos, including this one. <laughs> but we have December, so if you want to treat these makeup looks as uh, makeup looks for Christmas slash New Year's Eve, you can totally do that. Makeup looks dedicated only to Christmas or New Year's Eve will appear later this month. Don't worry, I have all planned way ahead. And if you have idea for a specific Christmas look or New Year's Eve look that you would like to see, you can of course write your idea down below in the comment section. Although I must admit that bigger chances that you're going to receive such makeup is on membership. But either way, I will gladly read your ideas because actually I am not sure what kind of makeup I would do later this month. So if you have any idea, I would gladly read them. No more talking, I'm going to apply my P. Louise base, zoom you in, and we can start. First shade I'm taking, Traveler. It's very deep cobalt or indigo blue shade, and I'm applying it in my outer corner, and also in my inner one, because this will be hot light. If you watched my previous video, then you should know what oversaturation is. And I can tell you right away that this shade might have this... I can see it right now with applying it, that this shade is... <laughs> if you're going to apply it, not as the first shade, but as second one, third one, just on any other super pigmented shade, then you will achieve this oversaturation effect phenomenon. <laughs> Either way, not very welcomed effect. But you know it can happen, so I can tell you right away that this shade might cause oversaturation problem if, if you start your makeup not from the darkest shade. I'm applying this shade in my inner corner and outer one, lower upper eyelid. I have some fallout which doesn't matter because I clean my under eye area every time before I do my face. It's absolutely beautiful shade. So deep and pigmented. Now I'm taking shade Pluto and let's blend this cobalt gently up, not far and only on my upper eyelid, like on the lower eyelid there's no place for that, but for sure I'm using this shade in my inner corner and also outer one, so don't forget you have also inner corner here. And this is really nice, sky blue. Usually I create a bridge here between outer and inner part of this makeup, but I'm going to do it with other shades, so right now I'm focusing only on blending this darker blue. Here also you can of course use layering, so the technique that I like to call sandwich, which means switching between two brushes. I don't actually add any more product, I'm just using a brush that is dirty and gently tap the edge 
between these two shades with one brush and then blending or tapping with other one and so on and so on until I be satisfied with this transition between these two shades so I'm just using two dirty brushes I'm not adding more product I'm using only what's left on the brush and what's on my eyelid of course but here I think that this sandwich won't be really necessary these two blue shades blend with each other very nicely and now I'll show you why with colorful palettes I usually don't do two different eye makeup looks in the same video but I rather to do just the same makeup on both eyelids this was actually a topic that I recently discussed with one of my members love you very much so this is the moment for you especially here I blended these two shades and everything seems very very fine very nice there's nothing wrong in this outer corner and look what is happening here I have a hole here what does it mean? Does it mean that these shades are patchy? No, it means that my left eyelid has its worst day, let's say. Sometimes I know that it happened especially with my left eyelid. Sometimes shades on my left eyelid like to be patchy. It just happens. So when I test colorful eyeshadows, I rather to do it on both eyelids in the same time. So I have bigger chance to see if eyeshadow is really patchy or not. Because if it's patchy only on my one eyelid, then probably is the fault of my eyelid, not the eyeshadow itself. But if it will be patchy on both eyelids, then obviously nothing will save it. It's not like um, both of my eyelids had bad makeup day. Like, obviously, sometimes, rarely it happens, but... It's not a rule. Most of the time when shade doesn't look well on both of my eyelids, it's rather this shade is not good enough. So officially my left eyelid is wasted today, so let's not pay attention to it and let's just take another shade and do this proper and good makeup on my right eyelid. I'm taking shade Misty Moon and this is a little bit, hmm, I would say something between grey, beige and maybe olive. I would say that this is beige taupe shade and I'm going to use it to connect both corners, both parts of the spotlight together so I'm going to create this bridge. This way also I'm going to blend these blues even more up to my brow. This shade might be not very visible on my eyelid although I think it's visible enough because I am very pale so hmm. I think you can see it. It is a little bit like beige taupe shade. Satisfaction! Now let's go with cut crease. I'm going to work with white concealer because this is what I like to use to do my cut crease. Of course, a flat brush. And I'm taking a little bit of this white concealer only on the tip of this brush. This won't be very different from the cut crease in general for hooded eyes. I showed you two videos. Ago. <laughs> the main difference will be only that this won't be like true cut crease, this will be spotlight cut crease. You look straight into the mirror and here where you have iris, here will be your cut crease. So you take your brush and you apply this concealer only close to your lash line. Watch out to not touch your lashes. So only here. And now Look up, browse down, and yeah, I have stamps, very slight ones, because I didn't use a lot of concealer. I should use it more, so maybe I'll do it again, so you will be able to see it better. Okay, once more. Watch it! Eyes up, browse down, and there are stamps. So these stamps are where your cut crease should be this is your bare minimum so when you open your eyes when you're going to just have your normally relaxed opened eyes then this cut crease will be still visible i'm going to do it slightly higher because i know that for me it's a little bit not enough high and also i plan to do a little bit double cut crease so i'm going to do it a little bit higher now here because this is spotlight then i'm going to do the same trick i've done with my normal cut crease so i tap in my outer corner here i'm going to tap gently side to side and also up down both corners let's say 
this outer part, so like this. And also this inner part, so here. This is not necessary, of course, but I like to do it because it helps with blending later, because you already blend your mats with this concealer. So those edges here won't be so harsh, especially if you want to use matte eyeshadow here, not shimmer, because shimmers most of the time are so pigmented that they will cover any mistakes. But if you want to use especially matte eyeshadow as your uh, spotlight, this middle shade, then I think that it's better to blend your concealer or whatever you use to do your cut crease with just shades that are around. Now I'm taking shade Stargazer and I'm taking it with such a very precise brush because I really need a precision. I'm going to apply it only here, very close to this whole cut crease because I, will, I plan to do double cut crease. So I'm going to apply this pink shade and then beneath it I'm going to apply my main shimmer. So only, only very close to the crease. This shade is a little bit flaky. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> that doesn't matter. I can live with that. As long as I can apply it with brush, then everything is fine. Okay, maybe I'll even do some lines with this shade. It's super pigmented eyeshadow, so I can do a lot of stuff with it. Something like this is sufficient. And now I'm going to apply my main shimmer. And this main shimmer is Orbit. And I'm using the same brush because I need precision. And I'm applying this, well, actually glitter all over this spotlight and creating also this little double cut crease situation. So like I said, I'm just applying this shade under this pink one. And now I'm going back to the first shade I used, this blue shade. And I'm gently tapping the edges with this glitter. This edge won't be ideal because this isn't like typical shimmer. This is more like glitter shimmer. It has some glitter particles. They are very small though, so this glitter I think it's one of the first glitter that I really like, but it is glitter. It's glitter with something like a little bit foil base. So I won't be very much able to really, really blend this glitter with this matte shade, but still I can cover it a little bit. Just connect this glitter with this dark blue. And this isn't everything. Now I'm going back to this shade and I'm applying it on my lower eyelid. This shade will very greatly blend with this blue, dark blue cobalt shade. I have a lot of fallout, of course, mostly under my right eye. Under left eye is, is much smaller, this fallout. As you can tell, this shade is a little bit chunky. Like, look how big the difference is between this here and what I applied on my lower eyelid. Now you can see that it is a little bit chunky. It's okay, but it won't be my favorite shade, I am afraid. I don't like such chunky shades, but it's like mm, metallic shade and because it's um, this kind of... Like it's not typical chunky eyeshadow, it's not like there's only flakes here. And I think that it might be used as topper. Of course, as topper that has also base. But right now I'm applying it also on this uh, blue and look what is happening here. Like here we have a little purple moment. It blended with this blue and it looks totally different on this blue than by its own. So I think that this shade can be treated also as like a little topper with base. I think I should clean this mess. <laughs> I applied blue pencil on my waterline today. I won't do face makeup with you because it's Monday and I really wish to finish this makeup and edit it as quickly as possible so you will be able to get this video tomorrow. So Tuesday, I am a little bit late. So uh, next time maybe, just let me know if you in general like to see when I do my face makeup or not because I am never sure if after eye makeup you like to see what products I choose and how I apply them on my face. 
let me know. All right, be right back. Okay, let's talk about what happened today. By the way, behind the scenes I use this brush. This is 102 and I think that this is brush for highlighter and I use it for my blush and I think that it's so good. And by the way, I used this brush with baked blush so hmm. well i think that i uh, found another very nice brush for blush <laughs> so this although it's for highlighter i used it for blush that's why i mentioned in one of my previous videos with this uh, collection that with brushes i like to use them not as the manual set simply because sometimes you can discover that brush that uh, should be used for example for powder will be great for you for contouring or as uh, with this brush brush that is suggested to be used as highlighter brush it's really really good just for um well blush brush and when we talk about the palette i only used six shades today i believe but what shades that's very important so if you watched my previous video if you haven't go and watch it because i showed you what is the oversaturation and why it's different from the patchiness although in the comment section i explained it even more so you can also read some comments under that video with this shade i used today the traveler this uh, dark deep cobalt shade this might be also this issues because i started today from the darkest shade to the lightest one uh, you won't see this oversaturation but believe me if i would use the shade pluto as the first shade and then apply travel on the shade Pluto then oversaturation will be there I am 100% sure that it will be there because when I started to apply traveler I can already feel that it's super pigmented eyeshadow and it might cause this problem like I said oversaturation isn't a disadvantage it's a, like a feature so my shadows just are like that more you can really watch my previous video I explained this whole phenomenon more in that video matte shades are really really cool i love matte formula uh, in all carnival palettes but let's talk about shimmers i used two shimmers today the orbit one that i tried to use in my first video and uh, well <laughs> let's not talk about it <laughs> today i really like it because i know how to um, work with these uh, glitters because they are actually like something between metallic foil and glitter because it's metallic foil but at the same time there are a lot of glitter particles however these particles are really really small and they are so small that although right now i have this makeup on my eyes like at least uh, half an hour maybe an hour i don't see any any creasing and with glitters i have this issue as a owner of hooded eyes half an hour is enough to have creasing all over my eyelid when I use glitters so with these glitters I don't have this issue that's why although I still not sure if glitters in the eyeshadow palette is a good thing but I have to admit that these glitters are so far I think my favorite glitters I have in all my collection so that's a really good plus another glitter tested and it's uh, good it's not creasing on my eyelids and i also used this shade and this shade is really interesting because it's a little bit chunky as you saw uh, when you apply it with brush of course it would work great with finger but i prefer to use my brushes than fingers <laughs> so it is a little a little like slightly 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 flaky but it's not impossible to apply it so for me it's sufficient this shade is a little bit duochrome unfortunately i don't think that it's super visible in this makeup but in the palette it's pink into gold something like gold i hope that you oh i hope that you can see that this shade is 
is a little bit duochrome so I bet that if I would apply it on a whole my eyelid then this shift would be much more visible I think that it's more visible yeah definitely it's more visible in on my lower eyelid than uh, than here which is fine the formula isn't uh, bad it's really creamy uh, like I said it's only a little little bit chunky. Next time I'm going to play either with grey shades because still I have some grey shades to test or with greens. That's the plan for the next videos. You can thank uh, members that they uh, suggest me these color stories and just together we uh, created such color stories for makeup looks like for example this one and of course you can become a member if you wish to all right that will be it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it sorry that i am late this uh, week first day video i am not sure if it will be on first day maybe it will be on friday we'll see we'll see let me know if you want to see face makeup this is what i asked you so again a little reminder let me know if you like to see when i do my face makeup on my videos and that will be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I love you very, very much. And I see you soon. <laughs> Bye.